In this video, I'm going to show you how to open a preferences page or a settings page in your project from code. And I'm going to do it in three different ways. But first off, why do this at all? Well, I got this in a request from a YouTube comment and I figured, what the hell, I want this in my own project. So I took a breather from building my game and slapped it together. And I figured, why not put a video together so the rest of you can have it as well. So let's get to it. First off, let's make a couple of menus so I can show you how this works, and then we'll add it in properly in a couple of methods afterwards. So here I have a menu item already set up in the static class. And all we need to do is call the setting service class with the open user preferences method. We're gonna provide this with a path to the preferences page. Now, if you're ever curious what that preferences page path would be, you can usually derive it from the naming used in the preferences window. In this case, I will open my own page created by a settings provider which I've called spawns and placed under the folder game. Now, if you don't know how to use settings providers and create them, I suggest you watch my video on it shown here, and I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out afterwards. It can really tidy up your tools development game in Unity, so I suggest you give it a watch. Anyway, if we pop back into Unity and go to the menu item, we can see this open the preferences window at the page we requested. But what about settings? Well, let's add a new menu item, and this time we'll call the open project settings method with the path to the editor page that Unity provides. Note that we also have project in the path here as that's the root for these pages. Great, so we now know how to open the pages, but there's not a lot of point in sticking them in a menu when we have to go to a menu to open the preferences window anyway. But I mean, it does jump us straight to the page, so there is a benefit. But let's do something different. We'll jump into our spawn class and we'll add a new attribute called context menu. And we'll give that the reasonable name of preferences. Now we'll add in the details from earlier and we're ready to go. Now, if we're in Unity and we're looking at our spawn component, we can easily right click on it and jump to the preferences page for the spawn components. And we can play with their options like this one that switches whether the gizmo for the spawn location is shown all the time or just when the designer has it selected in the hierarchy. Now let's move to the last method. But before we do, remember to like and subscribe or else in my next video, I will not include a bunny rabbit. And also remember to join in the conversation in the comments. You never know, you might get a video made from it. So first, we're going to create a property attribute. And this is pretty straightforward, so let's go through the code. We have a class that derives from property attributes. And if you don't know how these work, I explain them in detail in a video you can see on screen, and I'll link that in the description along with the other one. Now here we have one field, and that's for the page. That's the path to take us that we used earlier. Next, we're going to create a class called a decorator drawer. Different from a property drawer if you've used them, as we are uninterested in associating this property attribute with an actual property field. We're more interested in it decorating inside our inspector. Now the class here for the decorator drawer, we have the basics already set up. It derives from a decorator drawer and it has an attribute called custom property drawer, which attaches it to the associated attribute we just created. Now Unity knows to use this drawer whenever the attribute appears in our code. Next, we will override the on GUI to draw what we want to. In this case, it's gonna be a button which opens the page we will set on our attribute. But who wants a boring button with text? Let's switch that to a GUI content and use an image. In this case, we will rob the settings image Unity has stored behind the scenes. It's actually the same one used for the settings and preferences window. Then we will size it correctly and give it a tooltip because we're not monsters. In our spawn class, we add the attribute and the path. Jumping back into Unity, we can see our button ready to go in our inspector. Now, if you wanted to do the same thing for jumping to settings pages instead, you can simply repeat with a new property attribute class and decorator drawer with the different setting service method that I mentioned earlier. Now, go link up all your relevant preferences pages to their components, and while you do that, maybe the next video showing on screen can be playing in the background. 